What we're going to look at next um, is the concept then um, of elasticity. Um, and this is something um, that causes a great deal of confusion um, to students. Um, and really, um, it's actually um, a relatively straightforward concept. What it's trying to show simply um, is the responsiveness of a change in one factor to a change in something that affects it. Or sensitivity might be um, a better way of putting it. So what we're saying is, how sensitive is, I mean, say demand, if we look at the facts affecting demand, how sensitive is demand to a change in a factor that affects it? So if you think about the things that affect demand, um, we're talking about things like price, income, the weather, the price of other goods, and so on. And elasticity, all it's trying to measure is how sensitive is demand to a change in one of those factors that affect it. And you can think of many more, um, fashion, advertising, and so on. So in principle, that would give us price elasticity demand, income elasticity demand, weather elasticity demand, that one's, as, as you probably know, cross price elasticity demand, and so on. So all they're trying to do is to say, if one of these factors change, do we get a big change in demand or a small change in demand? And what I'm going to focus on um, initially is the concept of price elasticity demand. So what price elasticity demand shows then um, is the responsiveness then, or the sensitivity, the responsiveness of demand. So how sensitive demand is to a change in price. In other words, if price changes, how much does demand change by? So if we have, um, if demand changes a lot following a change in price, then what we'd be saying is that demand is price elastic. Demand is sensitive to a change in price. If, on the other hand, demand only changes a bit following a change in price, then that's, that's not very sensitive. It's not, we're not getting a big response here. Yeah? Um, and under those circumstances, we'd say that demand was price inelastic. So that's all it's showing. It's saying, if there is a change in, in this case, price, does demand change a lot, in which case it's price elastic, or does demand change only a little, in which case it's price inelastic. So, obviously the first question is, then, what do we mean by a lot. Yeah, it's not very, it's not very well quantified. And, and the best way of seeing that is to give ourselves an example. Yeah, suppose that, um, you know, suppose that, suppose that price fell by ten percent. So the price, you're a shop, you cut price by ten percent, um, and um, the question is, what are you hoping um, is going to happen? And obviously, what you're hoping is that demand, sales, yeah, is, is going to go up. What would you consider to be a lot? Suppose that, you know, suppose that following a fall in price by 10%, suppose the result of that was that demand in your shop rose by 2%, you're not going to be very happy. You've cut price by 10% and you've only got 2% more customers, yeah? That's not very responsive. And you know, you're not going to be making big money, in fact your revenue is going to have gone down. That's not good news. That situation then, we'd say that's quite unresponsive. That is inelastic. On the other hand, if price fell by 10% um, and you got 20% more customers in your shop, then you'd be very happy. Well, probably very happy, it depends partly on your production costs, but essentially you're going to be quite happy. You've cut price by 10%. 
you've got 20% more customers, you're going to have more money. And that situation is one that we would describe as price elastic. So the key then is actually, does it change more than proportionally? That's the key term when you're thinking about um, elasticity. If price falls by 10% um, and demand rises by more than 10%, or if price goes up by 10% and demand falls by more than 10%, then that's price elastic. If, on the other hand, you cut price by 10% and demand goes up by 5 or 7 or 9 or 3%, less than proportionally, less than 10%, then that's what we mean by price inelastic. So I think the important thing to remember at this stage is that when we say that something is price inelastic, that doesn't mean that there's no change at all. It might do, in which case we'd say that demand was totally price inelastic. If a change in price led to no change in demand, then price elasticity demand would be, would be zero. And you see why I say zero in a minute. Because at the moment we've got a problem um, in, terms of, um, in terms of the measurement. of price elasticity demand. Because suppose I tell you that price goes up by, down by 27%, so price is, falls by 27%, demand goes up by, I don't know, 64%. Um, on the other hand, different scenario, price goes down by 21%, um, as a result of which you know, demand goes up by 57%. Which is more responsive? It's very difficult to judge. Yeah? Um, here, a 27% change in price has led to a 64% change in demand. That's just less than two and a half times. Demand is changing just less than two and a half times um, as much as price. Um, whereas here, well, we got 42, another 15. It's you know, it's getting on for say you know 2.75 times as much as price. So the second case is, is more responsive, yeah, because demand is changing by a greater extent compared with the original change in price. But looking at it, you know, looking at it just, you know, just, just straight off, it's very difficult to judge. And that's why we have a formula for measuring price elasticity demand. And all that formula does is, is what we just did. Yeah, it says, okay, let's compare the percentage change in quantity demanded, and let's compare that with the percentage change in price. And the way we did that yeah, was we just divided one by the other. Yeah? We said, well, how many times greater than the change in price is the change in demand? And that's exactly um, what we're going to do here. So, if we take our original situation, let's suppose we have an elastic situation. We know that if price goes down by 10%, now what's going to happen is the demand is going to go up. And it's going to go up more than proportionally, the key phrase. So it's going to go up by 11% or it's going to go up by 15% or it's going to go up by 200% or it's going to go up by some number that is more than 10%. Now, if we reduce it to its basics, you know, if you have 10 people come into your party and, they have more than, and you have more than 10 buns, yeah, then they're going to get more than one bun each. The same applies here. The answer to that equation, the number is going to be greater than one. Yeah, what you're going to get is an answer that is greater than one, so 1.1 or 1.5 or 20, and also it is going to be negative. And it's negative because what that's telling you is the correlation. It's not telling you that demand goes down. It's telling you that if price goes down, demand goes up. Or alternatively, if price had gone up by 10%, then demand would have fallen. That's the point of, that's the, point of the minus sign. So when we say that demand is price elastic, what we're saying then is that the answer to this formula will be greater than 1 and negative. And by greater than 1 then we mean a number like minus 2 
or minus 3 or minus 4. Um, and when we look at that minus 2, that minus 2 actually gives us three pieces of information. Firstly, there is the minus sign. The minus sign in elasticity is what mathematicians call a correlation. And all that means is that an increase in price will lead to a decrease in demand, and a decrease in price will lead to an increase in demand. Secondly, 2 is more than 1, therefore it is price elastic. And most importantly, the actual number itself tells you a precise piece of information. That 2 tells you a key piece of information. And what it's telling you is that demand changes twice, two times as much as price changes. So in other words, what that means is that if there was a plus 3% change in price, then demand would change by 6% in the opposite direction. If there was a 7% cut in price, demand would rise by 14%. If price went down by 231%, they can't, I suppose, that price, no, let's, let's, let's not go there. If price goes down by 23%, then demand would go up by 46%, and so on. So when we say that, you know, when we say that elastic means that price elasticity demand is greater than one, we mean it's greater than one ignoring the sign in that sense. Yeah, so minus two, minus three, minus 394, they are all price elastic. So price inelastic then, we said that if demand is price inelastic, we get a less than proportional change. So again, if we look at our formula, the percentage change in quantity demanded, and that's common to all elasticity formulas. The percentage change in quantity is always on the top, whether you're talking about income elasticity, price elasticity, cross price elasticity, or any other elasticity you can think of, quantity is always on the top. The percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. This time what we're going to find yeah, is that if price goes up by 10%, then demand is going to change less than proportion. It's going to go down by 1%, or it's going to go down by 5%, or it's going to go down by 9.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999